Hi, this is Samira. Welcome to session on RIP, Routing Information Protocol. RIP is a type of dynamic routing protocol. We, in this session, we will take a look at the basics of dynamic routing and how the dynamic routing protocols are classified. Since RIP is an example of distance vector type of dynamic routing protocol, we will take a look at what is meant by distance vector routing protocols and how the distance vector protocol work. We would then take a look at what are the various features of RIP, what are routing loops in case of RIP and what are the various loop avoidance techniques that can be used. And finally, we will take a look at what are the various timers in RIP. In this session, we will not be covering the configuration of RIP. To take a look at the configurations of RIP, please watch the video on RIP configurations. The video will cover configuring RIP on Packet Tracer. Let us begin with this session. Let us begin with dynamic routing. In case of dynamic routing, the routing table is created by the routers automatically by communicating with the neighboring routers. In case of dynamic routing, you need to configure the routing protocols on the routers. The routers which have the same routing protocol configured on them can speak to each other in a common language and exchange the routing information with each other. Using this routing information, the routers themselves can create their own routing tables. The dynamic routing protocols are categorized into following classes you have distance vector routing protocol. In case of distance vector routing protocol, each and every router sends its own routing table to its immediately connected neighbor. When the router receives the routing table from its neighbor, it compares the routing table with its own routing table and whatever new information is present in the neighbor's routing table, the route, router is going to write that information in, in its own routing table. And that is how each and every router will learn about new routes in case of distance vector routing protocols. And hence, these type of protocols are also called as routing by rumor. Next, we have got link state routing protocol. In case of link state routing protocols, each and every router is going to send information about its links to all the routers which are present in the topology. In case of link state routing protocol, each router will then receive information about the links of every other router and hence each and every router can create the topology map of the entire network. The routers in case of link state routing protocols use the topology table that they have created and they apply shortest path first algorithm like Dijkstra's algorithm on the topology table in order to create their own routing tables. So in case of link state routing protocols, the routers do not rely on the information or the routing information from the neighboring router to build their own routing table. Okay, so they are going to build their own routing table by themselves. Also, in case of link state routing protocol, there are triggered updates and hence convergence is fast as compared to distance vector routing protocols. Next is hybrid routing protocol. The hybrid routing protocol is a combination of distance vector and link state routing protocol. The hybrid routing protocol takes the good features of both these protocols to create a new class of protocol called hybrid routing protocols. Example of distance vector routing protocol is RIP or IGRP. Example of link state routing protocol is OSPF. An example of hybrid routing protocol is EIGRP. As a part of CCNA course, we are going to take a look at RIP, OSPF and EIGRP protocols. These protocols are further classified as interior gateway protocol and exterior gateway protocols. An example of interior gateway protocol is OSPF or RIP 
An example of exterior gateway protocol is BGP or border gateway protocol. If you want to know more information about IGP and EGP, please watch my previous video on routing concepts. Let us move on to distance vector routing protocol. So since in this session we are going to take a look at RIP, which is an example of distance vector routing protocol, we will take a look at the distance vector routing protocol in detail. The distance vector routing protocol relies on periodic updates. That is, each and every router on which you have configured the distance vector routing protocol is going to send a periodic update to its neighbor. The update message is going to contain the routing table of itself. Using this routing table, the neighbor router is going to update its own routing table. And hence, this is called as routing by rumor. The distance vector routing protocol uses metric as the hop count value. Also, since the routers rely on periodic update, the convergence is slow. Let us take a look at how the distance vector routing protocol actually works. Consider an example which is shown here. We have routers R1, R2, R3. R1 is connected to the network 172.17.10.24. R3 is connected to the network 172.20.10.24 and then we have R1, R2 connected via WAN link and R2, R3 connected via WAN link. Initially, R1, R2, R3 are going to have a default routing table with themselves which contain information about the directly connected neighbors. So here you can see I have routing tables for R1, R2, R3. The red portion that you can see here or the pink portion. So this is the routing table that the routers initially will have. Okay, so R1 has got two directly connected neighbors. Network 172.17.10 and the network 10.110.13. These two are directly connected. So this is what is going to be present in the routing table of R1. Similarly, R2 is going to have these two directly connected neighbors in its routing table and R3 will have its directly connected neighbors in its routing table. So in the first time interval, the routing table is going to be only the pink portion that you can see. When you configure distance vector routing protocol on these routers, the routers are going to exchange their routing table with their neighbors. That is R2 will send its routing table to R1 and R1 is going to send its routing table to R2. Okay, R1 sends routing table to R2 and R2 will send its own routing table to R1. So when R2 sends its routing table to R1 after the first time interval of 30 seconds. Okay, so after the first time interval in case of RIP it is 30 seconds. Okay, when this first time interval elapses at that time R2 will send its routing table, that is this initial routing table to R1. So from R2's routing table, R1 is going to learn about this route. The other route is already present, so that is not a new information. R1 will learn something new from R2's routing table, that is this route. And hence, R1 will mention in its routing table that the network 10.1.4.30 can be reached via R2. Similarly, R2 is going to receive R1's routing table, that is this initial routing table is going to be received by R2. R2 will compare the routing table received from R1 with its own routing table and then it sees that there is some new information present. The information about the network 172.17.1 0 slash 24 and R2 will write down in its routing table that this network can be reached via R1. Similarly, R2 will also send its initial routing table to R3 and will receive a routing table back from R3. R2 has sent its routing table to R3. So this initial routing table when received by R3, R3 will compare it with its own routing table and it will find that 
This information about the network 10110/30 is new information and R3 is going to write in its routing table information about this network and this network can be reached via R2 because it is received from R2. Similarly, R3 would have sent its initial routing table to R2. R2 will compare it with its own routing table and will find it find out that there is some new information present. And this new information is going to be added by R2 in its own routing table and will mention that this route can be reached via R3. So that was about the first time interval. Similarly, when the second time interval of 30 seconds elapses, R1 would have a new routing table that is this. This routing table will be sent to R2. Similarly, R2 would have a new routing table that is this. This is what would be sent by R2 to R1. R1 will check R2's routing table and will find there is some new information that is this information and will update it in its own routing table. Similarly, R3 will send its routing table to R2 and will receive routing table from R2. When R3 receives a routing update from R2, it will find out that there is some new information present and it is going to update this new information in its own routing table stating that the network can be reached via R2. And that is how each and every router after a certain period of time will have the information about the entire network. So you can see R1 has got information about all the three, all the four networks in this topology. Similarly, R2 has got information about these four networks and R3 has information about all the four networks in the topology. When each and every router have information about each and every network in the topology, we see that the routers have converged. Okay. Also, we can see that the router converge, convergence is slow in case of distance vector routing protocol because of periodic update. So, R1 was not able to learn about the entire topology at once, right? R1 took two intervals to learn about the entire topology. Similarly, R3 also took two interval time to learn about the entire topology. If we have a large network, then in that case, the routers will take a lot of time to converge. And hence, we say that the convergence is slow in case of distance vector routing protocols. Okay, so that is what is this. Convergence is slow in case of distance vector routing protocols. Next, let us move on to routing information protocol and we will take a look at few features of RIP. RIP is an open standard protocol and it has got an administrative distance of 120. Administrative distance, as we have seen earlier, states the reliability of that route. In case of routing information protocol, the periodic update by default is every 30 seconds. That is here that we have seen after every time interval, the router sent its routing table to neighboring router. Right? So that time interval is 30 seconds in case of RIP. The metric used by RIP is hop count. That is, in order to calculate the distance, RIP uses hop count as symmetric. So, if you have got a source and destinations, okay, so with, between the source and destination, you have got two routers. Then, in order to send any packet from the source to the destination, the packet has to go to this router first, then it has to go to this router, and then the destination. Okay, so that is the first hop, second hop and third hop. So the destination is three hops away from the source. In case of RIP, the maximum hop count is 15 and 16 is deemed unreachable. Okay, so that means here you can see I have got a hop count of 3. So you can have a hop count of maximum 15 in case of RIP. 
if the hop count becomes 16 then that particular route is deemed as unreachable so you can use rip only in case of small networks not in case of large networks rip supports load balancing six equal cost links default is four that is in between the source and destination if you have got multiple routes to reach the destination and each of these routes are having the same hop count that is say that we have got two devices in between each of these routes okay so the hop count for each of them is same hop count via this path this path this path is same in such cases the source is going to load balance the traffic amongst these three paths that is if I have got three packets to be sent to the destination from my source then in that case the source is going to send one packet via each route to the destination so that is what is called load balancing across equal cost links by default RIP can load balance up to four equal cost links but you can configure the value to up to six equal cost links RIP uses Bellman port algorithm to calculate the shortest path RIP comes in two versions RIP version 1 and RIP version 2 RIP version 1 is used for class full networks whereas RIP version 2 supports classless networks also RIP version 1 does not support authentication whereas RIP version 2 supports authentication and it uses MD5 for authentication RIP has got one issue called as routing loops which is a major issue in case of RIP so let us take a look at what do you mean by routing loops and why do routing loops occur in case of RIP RIP being a distance vector routing protocol relies upon the information from the neighboring router to build its own routing table that is routing by rumor also we have got periodic updates for RIP we do not have immediate triggers but periodic updates and this to is what is going to cause routing loops in RIP. In order to understand routing loops, let us consider example which is shown here. So this is the network that I have and I have the routing tables. Okay, so these are fully converged routers. Okay, that is the routing table is fully converged for all of the routers present in this network. Now consider that one of the network on one end, that is this network 6 for example goes down. In that case the information would be known to router 5 immediately. Router 5 will update its own routing table and it will remove network 6 from its routing table. Okay, so this happens in the first 30 seconds interval. Okay, in the first 30 second interval, only R5 knows about network 6 going down. Rest of the routers still do not know that network 6 is down. In the next time interval of 30 seconds, R5 will send that information to R4. And R4 will remove information about network 6 from its routing table. So this happens in the next 30 seconds interval. In the next 30 seconds interval, this information will be sent by R4 to R3 and then R3 will remove information about network 6 from its routing table. Okay, but R1 and R2 are still not aware about network 6 being down. After that, in the next routing update interval, R3 will send its routing table to R1 as well as to R2. At the same time, R2 will also be receiving the routing table from R1. Okay, so R2 has received 
routing table from R1 and R2 has received routing table from R3. When R2 receives routing table from R3, it knows that network 6 cannot be reached. But at the same time, R1 informs R2 that network 6 can be reached. So R2 will change its routing table. So instead of having network 6 being reached via R3, R2 is going to write down that network 6 can be reached via R1 because that is what is being received from R1. Now in the next update interval, R2 will send its routing table to R1 and also R1 in the previous interval had received routing table from R3 when it knew that R3 cannot be reached. So R1 had removed this route from its routing table. Now when R2 has sent its routing table to R1, R1 feels that there is a new network that has come up called network 6 and this network can be reached via R2 and so R1 is going to write this in its routing table as R1 feels that this is some new information being received from R2. Similarly, R2 will also send this information to R3 and R3 will have in its routing table that network 6 can be reached via R2. Okay, so now if there is any packet which is going to come in to router R1 which is destined to network 6. Okay, so if this packet is destined to network 6, R1 will check its routing table and send that packet to R2. R2 will check its routing table and send the packet back to R1. And then R1 and R2 will keep bouncing the packet to each other. This is called as routing loop. So unless and until there is some external force which is going to stop the packet from being bouncing back to each other, the packet will loop infinitely between R1 and R2. This is called as routing loop problem in RIP. Since routing loop problem is a major issue in RIP, we have got various loop avoidance techniques that have come up. The various loop avoidance techniques include maximum hop count. In case of maximum hop count, for RIP, the maximum hop count is 15 and 16 hops is deemed unreachable. That is, the packet can bounce back and forth between two routers only for 15 times, not more than that. So that is how maximum hop count will help stopping the loop. Next, we have got split horizon. In case of split horizon, it states that information that is received from one router, that same information cannot go back to the same router. That is, if R2 has received information about network 6 from R1, R2 cannot send back that same information about network 6 to R1. Okay, so that is the second thing that can stop routing loops. The third is route poisoning. That is, Whenever a network goes down, instead of removing that network totally from the routing table, you need to poison the route. That is, you are going to specify that this network can be reached via 16 hops. Okay, and 16 hops is basically unreachable. So, you are poisoning the route instead of removing the route totally from the routing table. That is what is route poisoning. Next is poison reverse. Poison reverse states that if router R4 suppose has received the poisoned route from R5, then in that case R4 has to send an update to R5 stating that R4 has received this poisoned route. This is used to ensure that the poisoned route is received by the neighboring router. And lastly, we have something called as holds down. Hold down is a type of a timer that is used in order to suppress the information that is received 
before making a change in the routing table okay that is when r4 receives information about this network 6 that this is a root 16 hops away when r4 receives this information from r5 r4 is not going to immediately update that information in its routing table but r4 is going to wait for some time called as the hold down time during this time r4 is going to wait to see if it receives some other path which is better for reaching network 6 if r4 does not receive any new information about network 6 till the hold down timer expires then r4 is going to update its routing table with the poison tool so that is what is hold down next let us take a look at the various timers that are used in rip rip uses an update timer this is used for sending periodic updates to the neighbors so since we have seen that rip is a distance vector protocol which relies on periodic updates we have an update timer the default value of this timer is 30 seconds and it can be manually changed next we have invalid timer the time to elapse before deeming a route invalid is called as an invalid timer by default the invalid timer is set to 180 seconds next is the hold down timer we have already seen why do we require hold down timer hold down timer is used to suppress the information until the hold down timer expires by default the hold down timer is set to 180 seconds and finally we have got flush timer flush timer is used so that you do not the router is not going to remove an unreachable route immediately from the routing table but the router is going to wait till the flush timer elapses before removing the route from the routing table okay that is when the router initially comes to know that network 6 cannot be reached it is going to poison the route it is not going to remove this route from the routing table it is going to wait for 240 seconds that is it is going to wait till the flush timer expires once the flush timer expires within that time if r5 does not receive any new information about network 6 then it is going to completely remove this route from its routing table so these are the different types of timers that are used in rip that is all for this session please watch my next video to understand configurations of rip on routers using packet tracer thanks for watching this video please leave your comments in the comment section it would help me to create better videos for you